and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Fuente and Marifal present Meet the Professor. Hello, world. What's up? Yes. Hey, what's happening? I see you still have the stethoscope. You're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wonderful to see everybody on another beautiful Sunday. And welcome to the Professor Show. Melanie, how was your week? Amazing. And I'm actually really excited about this interview because Aaron is one of my favorites. So I'm ready. The excitement oh, oh, oh. is there. Jose, you can smile. It's okay. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All good. I mean, uh, amazing week with all the traveling, you know, in uh, Switzerland and then to Romania, then to Croatia. I mean, people were just blown away. That event we did in Switzerland, I mean, House of Grauer, wow. What can I tell you? Probably the best shop in Europe, without a doubt. Definitely definitely is one of the the best shops in the world. There's no question. Very, very special shop. Listen, without further ado, we're going to stop the chit-chat because today we have a very, very, very special guest coming on our show. One of the most famous writers of our industry, editors, one of the famous, one of the most, one of the finest marketing directors that our industry has ever had. Uh, the gentleman also is competition to me when it comes to dressing. He is a very, very, very elegant man. And we are extremely, extremely proud, happy. We are thrilled to have him on the show with us again for the second time. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, a warm welcome to the one and only Aaron Sigmund, a.k.a. The Sig. Aaron, welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. I got to tell you, Jose is so excited to have me on the show. I've seen people happier at wakes. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's like, did he just come from a funeral? I know you're tired, Jose. It's okay. Oh, Siesta tempo, Aaron, baby. Aaron, don't worry about Jose. You know, he was raised with the mummies. So he has a problem <laughs> with expression, you know. He, he, back in the day, when 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 Mama, Mama Egyptian taught him how to smile, it was... He was mummified. Jose, he was mummified. <laughs> Jose, what a wit. please be nice to our guest of honor today. He's a very important one and one that we all love very, very much. Wow, that's very kind. Thank you. Hi, Jose. Hey, Aaron, what's up? I mean, uh, we talk. We don't talk as much as we should talk because, you know, you're busy no. and I'm... Jose, there's, there's a traveling. reason Aaron doesn't want to talk to you as much as you. No, that is not, <laughs> that is not so. Let me tell you so something, cool. Jeremiah. When when Aaron and I talk, it's for hours, and we talk about cigars. Yeah, it's a long time. Oh, I know, it's- I know, I know. I was there once. He puts the phone down, and we go for eighteen holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we keep it for a while. There's no. Let me let problem. me let me tell you something. When I talk with Sig and I talk with George Brightman, I could spend hours with both of them. I lo- I like the. The fights that uh, Aaron and George get into I mean, because all, it's we very. All have something in, we all have something in common. Sig, Brightman, and I, we have no more hair left. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little, not a lot, but a little. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not talking about the ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate it. This, I, no, I but anyway, it. it doesn't bother me. No, I know, I know. I mean, but I anyway, wish I had so, it's, more. I know. You so have anyway, other things. It's okay, Aaron. Uh, I actually just it. actually I thought of you today. Hold on one second, Jeremiah. I went. If you look on my Instagram, I actually went hat shopping today at my favorite Ooh. hatter here in Manhattan. Great guys. Been here forever and ever and ever. I don't even know how long. Certainly hundred years or thereabouts. So anyway, hat shopping. It's very exciting stuff. Wow, I just killed everything. No, 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 it, it, didn't, it didn't kill anything. Jose's just wondering what to say next because it's not on the script. It's okay, Jose, I'm here to help. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You could take your hat and Aaron could take your hat. You know what you could do with them because the problem with you two guys, you, you guys don't have hair. And you know, I look better than both of you and definitely better than Carlito. But let's let's get on to the show. Come on, this is not about me. Let's. You're all jealous, I don't know what it is. Aaron, it's always great to see you. 
my brother. <laughs> Thanks, babe. You too. And uh, today it's a special show because yeah. you are working on a very, very, very special project. But before yeah. that, uh, I think we should talk about two books that many years ago, well, one was many years ago and one was more recent. Let's talk about those two books that you have written. The Impossible Collection of Cigars and Playboy Books of Cigars? And the Playboy, of course, of course. So yeah. people have an idea. So, you know, I think a lot of people know that I started out on the magazine side of things because there was no internet when I started out in the cigar industry. That was really the Stone Age. Um, and uh, after the magazines, I really wanted to continue my media influence going. And I hadn't really warmed up to Instagram and social media like uh, like I wanted to. And I didn't really see it reaching the type of audience that I, I wanted to. And I still was in love with print, quite honestly. So I was writing for Playboy. I was that I replaced uh, Richard Carlton Hacker, Rick Hacker, as the editor, cigar editor at Playboy, um, which was tremendous and and uh you know what an honor to be the actually the final uh cigar editor there there was somebody before rick i can't remember his name and while i was there i went to lunch with the artist leroy neiman who if people know playboy or they just know uh contemporary art pretty famous guy huge cigar smoker and uh he and i uh he went, we went to lunch at tavern on the green and he said we need to do a playboy cigar book there's a cocktail book there's a hosting book there's even a I think there was even a Wi-Fi or, or not a Wi-Fi, a Hi-Fi uh, book, something like that. And I said, well, that's way above my uh, pay grade. You know, you'll have to talk to Hef. So he got a house phone from the Tavern on the Green and he immediately called the mansion and he called Hef and they did the deal. I was just a spectator. I was having a glass of uh, wine and my Cobb salad. And then I know we're off to the races in a year I don't know, and a half later, I guess, the Playboy Book of Cigars came out, which is uh, by far one of the most widely circulated uh, cigar books out there, uh, uh, Amazon bestseller, blah, 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 and uh, did very well. And, uh, you know, it's got a little got a little touch of Playboy, got a lot of touch of cigars. So that that makes it unique in that world. Um, it's out of print now. It's a shame. I get requests for it all the time. But I, I mean, I own the rights to it, but I don't, you know. I don't print them. So, uh, and then almost to the day, 10 years later, I did the impossible collection of cigars. I had been working with Azuline, which is a luxury publisher here in New York and Paris. I know the owners very well. And, uh, we'd done a book on a watch brand and I went to prosper Azuline and I said, uh, uh, I really want to do the impossible collection of cigars. And I should preface this by saying there is an impossible collection of watches, art, cars motorcycles this is a whole series of books and um uh he said uh, naturellement, we have been waiting for you to ask us to do this book which is bull pucky but uh we did it and um i think we're going into our fourth printing with that book and that book there's just no other book on cigars in the world quite like that book yeah i mean not just from the price point but from the artistry and it really reflects the handcraft of cigars. It's a spectacular, spectacular thing. And then I'd been kind of looking and then subsequently we did another watch book together. And after that watch book, I was looking to do something else on cigars with Azuline. And then as the story goes, I called you the professor. And um, I said, I have an idea for a project. Originally then it was only one book. Uh, now it's two. And you said, reach out to Carlito. So I went from you to Carlito to Ciro, or Ciro, as I call him in Italian as opposed to Spanish. And um, and they say, uh, as they say, the rest is history. I mean, phenomenal. So the last 14 months, I have pretty much exclusively been uh, working on two books for uh, Fuente. Uh, they come out uh, in limited release this December. And then uh, in wide release, the first quarter of 2023. Uh, one is the exact same size as the Impossible Collection of Cigars. So it's very oversized. It's, it's huge. My hands don't even fit in the screen and the size of it. Um, and then the other one is a more readable uh, size and substantially longer uh, and just much more meaty 
as they say in the book trade. Um, and that book is called uh, Arturo Fuente from Dream to Dynasty. And so I'm super, super excited about both those things. And what's remarkable about these books is not only are they truly, truly another Fuente first uh, amongst many, many, many others, but more importantly, um, they're first for the industry. There's nowhere you can trace in the 210 plus or minus uh, years that we would call the modern cigar trade and uh, find two books like this that are mono brand monographs or mono brand volumes um, on a single family and a single uh, brand. It is, uh, I mean, it's an honor. It's a privilege in, in so many different ways. But uh, yeah, it's it's a spectacular project. And, uh, you know, well, what can I say? I mean, I've devoted a year and a half. By the time we're all said and done, it'll be two years of my life. So super exciting. Uh, that's amazing. And it's it's so amazing that we need to we need to get the man himself here and maybe comment a little bit on the, the pleasures he had on working with the one and only sick or not. There he is. Oh, my God. You know what? Oh. <laughs> they didn't give me they didn't give me a heads up. Anyway, my brother. <laughs> great. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> I, it's great listen, to see I, you. It's been a while. I got I got so nervous. Jeremiah just jumped in. I was just watching, laying back, and listening. How and did so, I do? Did I do? I did okay. I'm not one to judge. I am the one that's <laughs> being judged by the great Aaron Sigmund. But anyway, well, that's me. No, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, listen, it, for me, what a huge honor to have the blessing. Because I, I, you know, people use words like privilege or opportunity but to me it's a blessing to pay tribute to my grandfather to my father to everyone who's been painstakingly relentlessly working side by side for generations in the cigar industry for me to be the one that has lived are, long right. enough or born in the right time or the right, right place even though we would like to change that time you know but what a what a blessing, my friend. And I really want to thank you. No one we else, should. no one else, no one else could passionately pull this through the way that you do. And I just want to say one thing. Yes, sir. You're not only a writer, you're an editor. And what I admire the most, you're a ball buster. You <laughs> your prestige and your principles will never be sacrificed. I'm writing the book. I remember you said that. And I'm going to write what I see. This is not your story. This is yeah. my interpretation of what I see in history and so forth. And where this masterpiece eventually could play a place in history to be a guide, like other books who are guides to us, timeless throughout history of certain things that I just think it could be the basic book. If you're going to go to law school, this is the book you got to read. If you want to know about tobacco, about families, about history, about perseverance, this is the book. And um, I'm just, you know, just very grateful, my brother. Just very, and I say my brother, I do respect. I no, no. I, I, we should really explain, because there's, there's no way the audience would know this. This was a very emotional, cathartic, Usually I do not work so closely with a subject. I came down to the Dominican Republic. It was either four or five times. Uh, we came down with a photographer a couple times, Ian Spanier, who did a remarkable job on both books uh, and all the archival material that Tampa, uh, both your office and the Newmans provided. Um, but this was really, this was really deep. And I'm not saying the other books that I've written, 19 of them, didn't go deep dive into their subject, but this is different because this was working uh, tremendously with a primary source yourself. And it was a very unique experience because it wasn't like a single interview or something like that. We spent not just hours, but days together and weeks in the factory, on the farm, in, in your beautiful house in, and, and really, really got into everything to make sure, especially the story of the Opus X 
was told exactly and exacting um, and its place in history and really what it deserves. And I, I thank you because it was a tremendous time commitment. I know you're a busy man. You were, you're in Egypt and you're here and you're there and you're in Europe and you're, you're in the DR and you're in Florida. Um, it was, it was a tremendous, uh, it, it was, it was a fantastic. And, and, and I remember when I first came to you, like so many stories in this book, funny enough, 90% of the stories in this book start with Carlito saying no. And then you work your way backwards to yes. Almost uh, every, every uh, collaboration, every partner, everything starts with it. Saying no, it's never going to happen. And nada, then we kind of, nada, work, nada, 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 nada. And but, I think that was the amazing thing. Cause your number one concern was, was time. You're like, I don't know that I have the time for this. I said, a, we're going to make time together, but B, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to spend time together. And it's just, I've, I mean, I've worked on a lot of magazines, famous magazines, not so famous magazines. I've, I've written a lot of books at this juncture. This was a very, it's not special. Isn't the right word. It's such a unique, unique experience. And obviously there's a shared passion uh, there for, for these that, that just made it incredible. So it's a, uh, I mean, there's no way for me to accurately articulate how remarkable of a process this was. Actors often talk about their process, but writers have a process, too, and so do their subjects. And this was completely, completely unique. It was unlike any other project I'd ever uh, been on. And I've worked with other families on certain projects, and there just there was nothing like this. Um, I did a a wine book uh, for a family that owns a winery in Napa. And it just wasn't like this. I mean, I, this was really a solidifying uh, a relationship um, uh, that goes back uh, 25, going on 30 years. Um, and what a gift to me. And hopefully uh, the books will be a gift to everybody. Um, one hopes. You never know. But I'm yeah, hoping. Hope, hopefully so. Absolutely. <laughs> Sig, uh, yes, can you tell us a bit about you had you, uh, you had people that you that help you research this? Yeah. Because you wanted every single detail. Yeah. Uh, to be as accurate as possible. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I think there's this misnomer, especially on a book like this, a nonfiction book that. I just sit in a room by myself and I just conjure all this and I do some research on the internet and that's it. Um, first of all, uh, there was a photography team, uh, Ian Spanier and his assistant, Andrew. So that was on that side. Um, there were five editors that worked on this book, which is a lot, um, but we're grateful for that. Um, and they were all tremendous, especially Brian Dawson, who was the line editor. And then a name that, uh, that we mentioned earlier in the show, George Brightman and I spent, I don't know, 10 days together talking about the story of Opus X, um, which was remarkable. Uh, e. Edward Hoyt, Ted to his friends, who um, is a longtime uh, cigar industry trade, mostly editor, uh, helped me work on the Arturo uh, chapter, uh, which required a lot of research. We found just some amazing stuff, including the log the ship's log, handwritten in cursive uh, for when Arturo arrived in Key West, in, in Florida, um, the day, the nanosecond he arrived, this was there. Um, and then a gentleman by the name, there's a little bit about rum in there because of some of the uh, liquor partnerships that uh, the Fuentes have done over the years. And a gentleman by the name of Ian Williams um, helped me with that. He's one of the foremost writers on rum. So that was really nice. But George and Ted, uh, spent a tremendous amount of time with me working on this project and read drafts. And uh, even Carlito said at, at some point in time, I, I'd gone down and we were going over some of the stuff. And he's like, wow, George remembered some of the stuff that that I, I don't even remember. And, and that's why you go to multiple sources. Um, and that's why when you have primary sources, when you have the ability to have these long conversations with people, um, and really, I, I mean, when I look at the totality of the team, uh, if you include the creative director and the art director, when we're talking about a dozen people. And so when you look at these books, it's not unlike a cigar. 
you know, Carlito and I had a debate about it. It's been long said that 200 sets of hands make a cigar before you light it up. Carlito says it's got to be closer to 300 sets of hands. But there's a misnomer that when you're an author and editor and you're kind of spearheading a, a project, um, in addition to the publisher, who, which is both a company and an individual, there's a whole team that I'm working with, um, not to make the, the book look uh, as well as it can, can read as well as it can, to get the photographs and the artwork uh, just right. And uh, so it is not a soul, it's a very collaborative process like cigars. And that's one of the reasons books often remind me of the magazines that I worked with because they were very collaborative. If you write a novel, um, it's usually just a writer and an editor, and then it goes off to a designer for the cover, and that's about it. But books like this, it's really no different than than doing a magazine in that there is a primary writer slash editor, and that's me, but there's a whole team. There's a whole group of people, and uh, people who don't acknowledge that are it's 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 just wrong, quite honestly. But uh, and then there's the time that the entire Fuente team, um, Carlito and Chiro and um, everyone in the Tampa office and the Newman family who who opened their archives uh, and provided photos for the book. It this was very much a team 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 effort. So. Um, that's it's always uh, nice when a team comes together and succeeds quite honestly and these books are i mean it sounds immodest but whatever um these books are they're spectacular and they're they're special and uh and it shows on the page and people will know all the effort that uh that went into this now and uh i'm very grateful for that to have this opportunity to share it out. so there you go uh aaron Yes, sir. I think you should explain the difference between the two books. Right. Because the people have heard about it. I mean, I don't have. A little bit, yeah. And I don't want to get. I said I don't know anything about it. I know. Uh, Aaron. You read the press release, writing. I hope. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, well, they're 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 completely different. Um, they're really a completely different book. I mean, obviously, they share the same story. Um, the one that's the same size, which is called Arturo Fuente since 1912. And I don't think we said that, um, but I just did. Um, it's a huge volume and it is as much a book as it is an object of art. So this is again, very much akin, uh, a kindred project or spirit to cigars themselves. The book is hand cut hand bound which means it's hand stitched there are actual cigar ba bands that we took and we put on the page page by page copy by copy thousands of copies i mean there is somebody who is sitting there and taking 50 cigar bands for every book and gluing them down there are photos that very much are tipped in like your grandmother did in her old photo albums on the four corners. So it's huge. It comes in a leather bound box and it's three dimensional. I mean, it's three dimensional because it's in the real world, but it has a 3D Opus uh, X uh, label on it. It's, it's a work of art. It is truly a work of art as much as it is a book, but it, people will read it, but it's not what I would call a reader. Now, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, although it is beautiful in itself and has a silk cover, which is amazing, a gold silk cover, um, Arturo Fuente from Dream to Dynasty, that book is specifically designed to read. It is a reader. It is, uh, it's about half the length of a classic novel, uh, about 40,000 words, which is a lot of words. Um, it's 304 pages. Oh, there they are. Yeah, there we have it. So the big ones huge it's like two and a half feet by two feet or three feet by uh you guys can do the metrics uh and i don't i don't do centimeters and stuff and then the gold on the smaller book is gold silk which is supposed to be evocative of uh of the oh hold on i have an example right here of uh, uh let's see of the uh packaging uh that uh Fuente is, is famous for. So, um, so there you go. It's supposed to be evocative of that. So it's just, uh, it's incredible. I mean, there's just nothing, there's just never been anything like that. And I, 
I keep on stressing that there, of course, have been books on cigars. I mean, obviously, I've written some of them, but there's just never been like anything like this on a single brand or a single family. There just hasn't. There have been books on Alfred Dunhill, but it didn't focus just on the pipe tobacco and the cigars they were famous for. It was their suits and and uh, and their watches and all their accessories and how they started out in the in the automobile business and stuff like that. So this is. I mean, what can you say? How often it's it's fall here in autumn uh, in uh, New York, obviously. Um, when else do you get to say to your children or your grandchildren or your friends or your family, uh, I got to do something that was the first. Carlito knows what that's like with with the Opus, but very few people get that experience. It's like you are the first person to do something. Um, that's why I was so excited about this project. Uh, and you know, Jeremiah and, and you and uh, Carlito and Chiro have been so remarkably, uh, genuinely, sincerely um, supportive and helpful. And really just it's been a tremendous experience. Sig, could you tell us a little bit <clears throat> about the launch, when it's going to be, yeah. what are the events that sure. you guys uh, have set up? Yeah, of course, with pleasure. I'm not keeping you awake, am I? <laughs> All right. I, I was asking. I was asking myself the same question, <laughs> Jose. It's time to have a cup of coffee because you look like you're about to pass out. And this is a live show. We actually have people who are watching this, and you're really not giving the right impression. I don't no. know what Carlito thinks, but this is a disaster. He's on Instagram. He's just listening, having a good time. Listen, listen what I, I told you a couple of shows ago, that the part that I have to work, if Carlito didn't pay me, I would be happy. But this shit that I got to take from Carlito and you, Jeremiah, <laughs> there's not enough money in the World Bank to pay me. I do my job. They're just that's, jealous that's of me. Because sick. the world I know they are. Right tranquilo, now. tranquilo, tranquilo, you, muchacho. Hey, have you ever heard? Dun, da, dun, da, dun. <laughs> the Pink Panther, how he moves right. slowly. I've been just sending a little, trying to open Jeremiah. I was his mentor. He was really a cool kid, man. Very well raised. I fucked his mind up, okay, when he was ready. <laughs> I, I take responsibility. <laughs> Who do you think tells him what the fuck to ask you and how to interrupt you 150 oh times? Oh, my God. Hey, Hilarious. Jose, listen, we'll have a conversation, but just after the show, give me 30 minutes. I'll take my medication, and I will be able to have a serious conversation with you. We've got a lot to talk about, so don't hide. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so the book's... So, you know, one thing that I don't know if you guys have talked about on the show, this is the 110th anniversary of Arturo yeah. Fuente cigars. Boom. There wow. it is. So originally, when we started talking about the books, we kind of looked at this as an end cap. When I went to Carlito in the beginning of the year, I'm like, is there going to be a 110th anniversary uh, cigar to go with the book? He's like, for the 113th anniversary we will have the 110th anniversary cigar. I'm like, <laughs> awesome. So, um, so yeah, so the book. So they will come out this year for the 110th anniversary in a very limited release. And then they will go into wide release in February um, with uh, Azaline, the, the publisher, putting on, them on their website. We're still kind of ironing out how the distribution is going to go, um, but they will be wide released and and uh, that's it. The big book, um, given the artistry and the time that it takes to produce each individual book um, and the price point is done in very, very kind of like the rare pinks. I, I noticed Carlito's wearing his pink shirt like the rare pinks. I mean, these these take real time. So that's a very limited production book, uh, extremely limited, as a matter of fact. Um, the smaller book uh, is also not. I mean, look, I'd love to be J.K. Rawlings, but, you know, uh, and, and print a million copies. But, you know, it, it'll be out there and it'll be available. And that is a book that, uh, you know, when it runs out, the likelihood of it being reprinted is good. As far as the rollout goes, uh, December, Jeremiah, uh, Chiro, Carlito and I will be in Dubai uh, launching the book, the worldwide launch of it. with uh, As well, excuse me, interrupt, as well yes. as Carlos Arturo Fuente III. There you because, go. I didn't even know. Because we made a decision. If there's going to be another book, 
Yeah. Let, them, let them go out there, bust their ass and earn it. That's I agree. Goal. And I had the pleasure of meeting him in Detroit. I'm trying to remember that what, when that was, June, May or yeah. June, something like that. It was great. I think it was June, Cars and Stars. Yeah, yeah it was great. Uh, great event. Fantastic event. Beautiful home. Anyway, so we're going to do an event in Dubai. That'll be the first one. Then sometime in the beginning of uh, 23, we were going to do an event in London. Uh, we'll do another one in New York. And then we're going to do one in the Dominican Republic lately at the Arturo Fuente Cigar Club in the capital. I'm pushing to do that in and around kind of pro cigar, but it's to be determined. But that's kind of how it'll roll out. So by the end of the first quarter of 23, these will be everywhere. If you're lucky enough, and maybe if you're on uh, uh, Papo's uh, good list and not bad list, you'll get one for Christmas or Hanukkah. But uh, uh, other than that, it's a uh, they're going to be there'll be copies in Dubai, obviously, and a couple other places. But it'll it'll really in in a wide way come out first quarter next year. So Aaron, they will you, be out in twenty three. Would, would yeah, you please also give us a little insight how the the big collectible book with the greatest brands of the world are only inclusive to that club? How that book is made by hand? How there are labels and everything by hand? Would you give a little explanation of the actual book? Sure. So, you know, Azaline is a remarkable. So when I started in the in 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 media in general, print media, uh, Rizzoli, Abrams, there were only a couple of really exceptional kind of coffee table or art books. And then a company by the name of Tashin came in and they really took it to a next level. Interestingly enough, Benedict Tashin, the founder and the chairman of that company, is a big cigar smoker. Never done a cigar book. Just no reason. But the Azulines, um, the Prosper Azuline is a big cigar smoker. And I want to say the two Arturo Fuente books are their fifth and sixth or sixth and seventh cigar books. So they've been very pro tobacco, very pro cigar, um, not the organization, but uh, pro as in uh, four. And um, they have taken the artistry of books and gone backwards and by that i mean this is the large book is truly a handcrafted hand bound hand tipped in hand i mean it, it hand stitched this is a handmade book it, it there i mean it's art i i keep on uh, you know it's an object to art uh i know uh, jeremiah's like god we've got to work on sig's french accent it's cool um <laughs> but uh it, i mean these are really, 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 really unique. And as I said, this um, this book is part of uh, what they call their ultimate collection. And uh, they just did an ultimate book for Louis Vuitton, for instance. Um, the brands that this company, Chanel, Vuitton, I mean, the best of the best of the best when it comes to luxury. Azuline within the pantheon of the luxury world is up there with all the great luxury brands. They don't really consider themselves just a quote unquote book publisher. They consider themselves a luxury lifestyle brand. And if you ever are in London and can go by the Maison Azuline on Piccadilly, it's basically Piccadilly and St. James's um, right on the other side of the arcade where uh, German street is. This is, that is a showcase of how they envision their entire company. There's, a bar there and a guy hand uh, crafting like little ice cubes out of squares wow. to balls and and they have food and they have all these uh, all these kind of knickknacks and, and and bookends and whatnot and they have their books they see and they make carpets they make all sorts of stuff but they see themselves very much as Fuente as a luxury lifestyle brand in the case of Fuente you have an Epicurean luxury lifestyle brand with partners like Stefano Ricci and Ublo watches, but they also have partners. They've done stuff with Gucci and, and, and as well as Vuitton. They are a very, this is, this is, this is why I keep on saying, I wish I had more words to articulate how not just special this is, but how nobody has ever done this. Nobody. Um, and I don't know that without a partner like Azuline, anyone really could have, um, and that was a tremendous experience. So, I mean, this is really, but even the small book, I don't want to diminish the quality of the small book talking about only the big book. I mean, to use gold silk for the cover of this, I mean, who else does that? I mean, nobody does that. It's, it's, uh, 
and that has to be handmade as well. So even the smaller book has that, and it's very fairly priced. I mean, it's a very reasonably priced book. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, it's just, it's super duper special. I mean, these books are, are truly remarkable. They will, other companies, not just in the cigar trade, but in the wine trade and spirits trade, people are going to look at these books and be like, you know, we may have a book, we, not in the cigar trade, but in the wine and spirits, they may have a book, but this takes it to a whole different level. We're starting here. One of my favorite, Orson Welles, brilliant, lifelong, huge cigar smoker, right? He had a quote that I just love, and I use it often. He said, after Citizen Kane, he said, I started on top, and I've been working my way down ever since. We have started absolutely at top. There is, We can match it. I'm not quite sure. I mean, you can always make tweaks and edits and swap out one or two photos, but we are starting absolutely here. And we can only kind of maintain, it's weird, this camera goes opposite. We can only keep on going that way. We can't, it just, or down. It just, there's no, this is this is as good as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. Jeremiah, you really got to let me record the opening of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you, you got you to gotta get in there. You got to. <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah, this question is for you. You are, without a doubt... Probably more closer to Carlito than men, men, many, maybe of his distant cousins. Let's leave it at that. And uh, I want to hear, because your family has been very close to the Fuente family. You're more, you're not blood related, but you're more than blood related. I want to hear your thoughts on this that finally Carlito decided to do this, which I think was overdue for a long time, and I'm glad that SIG could convince him to do it. I want to hear it from you, because you're very That's eloquent, not job. like me. <laughs> I think that... Um... If there's one company in the world at this moment in time that should be doing this, it's Arturo Fuente, for many reasons. And I'm very happy that it's Sig who has, who had the idea and reached out and convinced Carlito to open up his heart and to open up his company and then open up his archives. Because I know Carlito, and there's no way he would want to do something like this. He's in reality relatively timid. He's extremely humble. And the last thing he would ever want to do is put himself at this level in front of the stage. And Sig, I have no idea how you've managed to do this. I've known Carlito my entire life. I have no idea how you've managed to do this. But you've managed a lot more than you think. Because this is not only about a book. This is not only about convincing Carlito to assemble information and publish it. This, about, this is about recording history. One of the most I don't even know what word to use again. And, and <laughs> one of the most astonishing family stories in the history of our industry. For sure. But even more importantly, one of, if not the most astonishing figure in the history of our industry. And you've managed to capture him. You've managed to pull him into your ink. 
And you know how powerful ink is. So it's a hard question you're throwing at me, Jose, because the fact that Carlito accepted to put himself, to melt himself into Six Inc. is something which is going to be way more powerful than just the publishing of a book. And that's what I believe. Now, I wanted to hear your opinion because... Uh, I to say something. That was amazing. I mean, that, I mean, I, I mean, I'm deeply touched and that is so kind. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. It was either Carlito or Sasquatch. I had to go after one of them. And, uh, and I probably Carlito was more elusive, quite honestly. Um, but it's true. And, and I agree. And uh, people's... Is, Jeremiah, before you get into this, Jose, I want—I really want to say something. People see Carlito on the show, and he's in his pink guayabera and his pink pocket square, and they see him on the stage, and they see, if you spend real time, and I like to think I captured a lot of that in the book. The book's very personal. Um, not just personal to me, but it, 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 it has depth and emotion. If you really, really look at the way Carlito is in his private time it's you know we all have, and i talk about this actually in the introduction to the book i talk about you have public personas you have Giorgio armani and you have ralph lauren and you have you know winemakers and you have other cigars and they have this as deepak chopra would say this mass this public mass this public persona and then there is actually a person a real person behind that and it's not that they're two different people but the compartmentalization of that in it, whether you're a politician or you're a luxury good uh, purveyor or whatever it is, you you have to have that. And Carlito is a very reserved. He has his his intimate inner circle, and you know he's he's loved by by many, but only known very very much by few. And you know there's there's extended family, and there's family family, and there's a, a few others, and that's really. Really, truly it. And I like to think that this book and and people, again, see this exterior persona and they don't understand the amount of humility. When Carlito says he's a humble little cigar maker who grew up in a wood house with a tin roof, he never forgets that. Now, he can afford much more than that now, but he never, ever, ever, ever forgot where he came from. And that is what and who Carlito Fuente is. That's what I don't mean to talk to you, Carlito, in the third person while you're sitting right there, but this is this is what makes the magic. And this is what makes it so special. I sit there and meticulously detail the quantum leaps of within the cigar trade, within the cigar industry. And I will tell you, funny, I don't know why I'm the only one smoking, but I will tell you this. Whoops, there it goes. The creation of the Opus X, the Fuente Fuente Opus X, is absolutely unequivocally the last major paradigm shift that the cigar trade has ever known and may ever know. And that is no small, I'm gonna use a bad word, fucking thing. It is actually quite the opposite. It is a tremendous thing. And we go in in the book and we meticulously delineate exactly why the creation of this cigar was so important, not just to the cigar trade, but for all of the Dominican Republic, for all of the uh, the cigar trade, and all of the Epicurean luxury brands. It showed that the minute you tell somebody, it is a classic Horatio Alger uh, allegory or story. It is the minute you tell somebody, you can't fucking do it. Carlito and 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 Don Carlos, God rest his soul, um, said, we're going to do this and we don't care how much time and we're not worried about the money and we're not worried about this. We're not we're going to do it and we're going to get it right. And that story is meticulously chronicled thanks to Carlito, uh, thanks to George and many other people that I interviewed for this book. And that is what. Both books, the one chapter that both books 
share is the creation of the Fuente Fuente Opus X. And that is, it's not the only story, uh, but is certainly the most important story within that. So everything Jeremiah said um, was not just exponentially true, but even more so. And that's just, it just is. Carlito would never, you have no idea how many people have said exactly verbatim what the Godfather said, which is, Carlito is way too humble. He'll never do this. Oh, well, we'll see. And just like people told Carlito that he would never create the Opus X, ever, ever, ever. When people said, oh, Sig, you'll, you'll never convince him to do these, what was originally one book, now two. You'll never, ever get him to agree. Well, when, when people say no, exactly how I started this interview, when people say no, it, it's not, you can sell a lot of different things. You can sell a tangible, you can send, sell an idea. But the fact of the matter is selling only starts when somebody says no, somebody sells, says yes. That's not selling. That's not convincing. That's not really having a valid, great idea. And I, I think that's what all these stories are about. I think that's what's really, truly remarkable is Carlito said no. And then we worked backwards. Carlito was told that he could never create a Dominican Republic Poro and a world-class rapper in the DR. And he said, okay, you say no, and I say yes. You know, just like the song. So that's really what it's all about. So thank you, Jeremiah, uh, for making that point. Well, it's time to take you and to flip you backwards now on Melody's yeah. Hotspot. <laughs> sure. All right, so hi Mel. Sig, what's up, Mel and Sig? Good, I like it. Yeah, you know what? I usually ask people what is the best advice that they can give someone, but I think that you just gave it because <laughs> yeah, that so. was powerful. Is that the fact of right. selling starts with the word no? It oh does. my god, I wrote that down. So <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you for that. Sure. All right, so I got some great questions. First of all, I am. This has been so much fun. This show is probably one of my favorites because it is so sentimental. So I love it, love it, love it. It is. Right? So Sig, do you anticipate a bigger personal reaction whenever you first look through your new book or through the magazines of the Playboy Mansion you were once involved? <laughs> yeah, um, well, I think those are two, uh, two very different things and very di uh, I was single uh, a good person. I mean, are they? <laughs> so uh, when I was with Playboy. Uh, yeah, you know, I will tell you something that's universally true about any creative person, whether they're a painter, an actor, a writer, um, and maybe even a cigar maker. I don't know, Carlito can elaborate on this as can Jeremiah. When I see something, I only see the flaws. Other people, are, you know, loud you and, 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 and their accolades and people. And I only ever see what, if I had an opportunity to do a second edition, what I would do ever so slightly different. Um, you know, Carlito and half, uh, have a lot in common. They didn't, they didn't, uh, they, they wore their pajamas until five in the afternoon. So I guess that's, uh, there's, there's that, um, you know, Playboy was a very unique experience and it was a unique uh, period in time, obviously. So Did you have a favorite years. bunny? Did you have a favorite bunny? You know, I spent a little time <laughs> at the Playboy Club. In uh, this is a this is a family show, right? Um, I spent some time at the Playboy Club, and I got to go. I only was at the mansion once, but I was in the offices, obviously, every day. And the the Playboy Club was just down the way. So there are stories, not for this show, but. but <laughs> All right. So, what was probably whenever you may have felt that. Uh, Carlito actually gave you, you know, an answer to your question, but maybe you decided that in editing, you mm -hmm. didn't think maybe you were, you know, contradicting towards it. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Was there a moment towards that? And how did you deal with it? You know, it is a tremendous and I'm not placating or avoiding the answer. I'll answer it succinctly. But you're always 
when you're a writer, you're, you're putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's just like being an actor if you're portraying somebody that that is living or or had once lived. Um, this is the Fuente family story, and it starts with Arturo and leads all the way up to what the fourth generation will do. Um, it's not for me. Uh, you have to maintain a degree of objectivity, right? Uh, it just, I am telling, yes, I tell it in a very kind of uh, warm novel-esque kind of narrative. But the fact of the matter is, um, this is someone else's story and you have to honor that. It's not, I mean, if there was a factual error, um, I would have brought it to Carlito's attention, but nothing like that ever happened. And enough people were primary sources on the book. Again, George, uh, for one, uh, I went over some old interviews that um, Robbie Levine had done and Don Carlos had done with Cigar Aficionado with Marvin and and the people there. So I, everything kind of checked out. Uh, there, there just was nothing that was ever contradictory. So, so no, it, it never, that never happened. What was one of the most surprising stories that you heard from Carlito whenever you guys were spending so much time together? Well, I, I think like many people, I knew a lot of bits and pieces about the story about how the Opus X was created. But truthfully, as many articles as I've written about cigars in general and this brand specifically, um, I just didn't know the whole story. And I don't know, even though it's been amazingly well chronicled, in Cigar Aficionado, in Cigar Journal, and so many wonderful publications. I just don't, I mean, the Opus X chapter by itself has got to be six or 7,000 words. That's like a long Vanity Fair article. I just don't think anyone had the room to really get it all, get it all wow. down. As, as, as Jeremiah said, ink is powerful. And when you have enough ink or enough space to write it, that's really what it's all about. There were just things I, I didn't know um at all uh quite honestly um about the early days there my my favorite romantic part was there's a whole story about um palm trees and pine trees uh, you wouldn't know it being kind of an urban creature but i love i love the outdoors and it was just a remarkable thing it also dovetails into to nature and how there's a universality to to you know so many things that tie us all together. And um, that was, it was, it was a common theme. It was a theme that the photographer Ian Spanier picked up on. It's something that I write a lot about. So, but I mean, that's like a little minute detail, but it became really kind of a visual representation in both the written narrative and the photographic narrative that I just would have never known unless I had gotten to spend the time with Carlito uh, that I did and, uh, and other family members for that matter. So, yeah. Right. So, I mean, so there deep, was just stuff I didn't know. That's awesome. And this was well, some deep shit, Mel. <laughs> I, I try not to. But, okay, last question, last question, and Go. I'll make it really, I'll make it, you know, surface. Do you think that you dress better than Carlito? Well, I dress very differently <laughs> than Carlito. Uh, you know, but uh, I, I actually... As a gift, he and Chiro got me a guayabera. So I now I own my very first guayabera. So there you go. Oh my gosh, we have to see you know. that. Uh, actually, is it the photo that I used in the book? I don't think I used it in the book. I think it may be on my Instagram, but I've used it subsequently. I actually, I've taken some photos with it. It's great. It's it's That's it's very, awesome. I never knew how comfy they were. It's, <laughs> it, it, was, it was awesome. I love it. Did he, did he give you cigars to put in there as well? <laughs> well, I, they've been very generous. I don't think I'm worried about the cigars to put in there. But uh, it was nice. I'd always wanted one. And I just never picked one up. I don't know why. So it was cool. Awesome. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you, dear. It's so good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, too. Whatever's about to be said next, we're being broadcasted out of Basel, Switzerland. Anybody who uh, is easily shocked, please log off. And join us next week for a rated PG. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Rich's Riot.
Wow. Sig, once again, you've brought so much to, to the Meet the Professor show. It's amazing. Uh, just before we went on, we got a warning. The state patrol is only about a half mile from my house. They just put out a, a, a wide statement that one of the drugstores nearby has been broken into by two people and stole all the Viagra. So we're all on the lookout for two hardened criminals. But uh, I know I'm going to run a little long. Uh, Jose always asks, uh, you know, who would you like to smoke a cigar with? Uh, past, present, future, whatever. And I've had the pleasure back in the late 90s in Tampa with the Cigar Family Celebration to smoke cigars. And on the panel in front of us were Carlos Fuentes Sr., Stanford Newman, Carlito, Eric, John Oliva. I may be leaving someone out. But those were amazing shows, uh, events for the, a kid like me who's been smoking cigars probably about as long as uh, my uh, younger pal, Jose, who's right now three years younger than me. But uh, uh, if you're looking for something to get the next show going wild, because uh, uh, I, I would invite whoever's still alive from that group, uh, those that are missing that I would have loved to have met uh, at CFCs were Ain't Angel Oliva and uh, Rick, Richard Morafel, Rick Morafel. Uh, but if, if we could put together a group like that, uh, like Jose and, and uh, Carlito did last year at uh, pre, pre show, and add in, uh, you know, Jeremiah, uh, Sig, and the Pope, George Brightman, uh, I think that would kick off the show better than anything ever. Uh, Sig, you call yourself a writer and an editor. I add the word historian every time I think about you because you're telling the history of, of this wonderful industry. You know, I've only been in it a short time, 12, 14 years, whatever it's been, after 44 years in the clothing business. And you bring things to mind from my memory. Uh, you mentioned German Street. Uh, when I left Hickey Freeman after a number of years and moved to Texas, I worked for the licensee from Dax Simpson, who was located on, on German Street as well. Well, uh, I'll keep my eyes open, and getting Carlito to write a book, I know, was not easy. When Stanford Newman gave us all a copy of his second book, uh, Cigar Family, I went to Carlito and said, okay, I got the title for your book, Fire and Rain, because they've been burned out, shot out, and burned out, uh, and flooded many, many times. So I'm glad you got that story, and I know it's not called Fire and Rain, but it's it's the history of that company. Well, um, we're about a day from uh, Halloween right now, and, uh, you know, I checked online to find out what's the uh, uh, leading app for skeletons, and I found out it's called The Bone Zone. And then I went further to find out how skeletons have sex, and it's by boning all night long. So uh, that's my stories for this week. I'm sorry to run long, but uh, uh, <coughs> God bless you for coming on and everything. <laughs> Oh my god. Fuck <laughs> it. <coughs> Fuck hey, freaking genius. <laughs> Lily. Uh Sig, uh Yes sir. This has been without a doubt an incredible show. And like Jeremiah said, and I always thought about the Fuentes story. Because like you said, a lot of people know Carlito in certain aspect, but really that human aspect that he has, caring about people, caring about the factories, the workers, the human capital that Foundation. he has, which is the biggest capital in the world, yes. So I'm glad that he did it. I did talk a little bit with him about it, but I think the magic was uh, he knowing the kind of person that you are. And even though I haven't read the book, and like you said, maybe if I behave, Carlito will send me a copy for, I don't know, maybe when I retire. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to see you again. We will catch up one of these days and talk a little bit about cigars and the book. That. But again, brother, thanks for being on the show and thanks for yeah. doing an amazing, well-deserved job for the Fuente family. Thank you, brother. With great pleasure. My brother, Sig.
I say yes, brother sir. again out of respect, sir. But hopefully love. I mean, <laughs> we've been through a lot. I don't think people will ever be. I I, I could never share. You, this you, was really you know a special was, experience. What frights me the most is that the journey is not over. No, not even hey, close. But listen, um, I was going to say something to the professor, but you know what? I'll wait till after I take my meds and then I give him a call because I think he's had a, a rough <laughs> day. But anyway, you know, it's true. I said no. I know you said no. I said no many times and everything. If it wasn't for what I've learned from the professor is that a clock doesn't keep ticking forever unless somebody winds it. And I think that you were mentioned as a writer, a journalist, and the only way you keep that clock ticking when I'm no longer, longer looking at the clock is for you to right. document something. This program is exactly what we all hope for it to be is to document all the people who have contributed so much of their heart and so forth. I'm very grateful. First of all, I have to mention Cito Gachela because if it wasn't that he told me you're going to do it, whether you like it or not, right. and, you know, and, and he said, listen, it's not about you. You have a responsibility. And I learned from the professors that clock is ticking. And I feel that I have a responsibility so different from what I believed in many years ago of being completely shut down for a reason that I've learned almost a defense mechanism to isolate myself from everyone else. And my, in the last years, COVID, being locked down, being depressed from being away from so many people, I just want to hug. And listening to the professor and learning from him, it really is about, in life, the only thing that we could do is plant seeds. Hopefully they're healthy seeds. And to be able to pass that on and teach teach and teach. And the only thing that this book would teach is not to make the same mistakes that I've made. That perhaps I should have still been a local musician playing those weddings and smiling and laughing and everything. But that love for art, that passion took me to another world, which I have no regret. And to know that you are documenting the inner soul, those feelings, of what inspired me, what motivated me, that passion that burned profusely in my soul. And respect for my grandfather and my father and everybody who's worked side by side along with my family for generations and generations to give them the respect they earned. Thank you, Aaron Sigmund, for documenting that and having something that will be around much longer than I will be. I appreciate that it. That anyone will be. It's, then anyone it's will be. It's been an honor and a pleasure, and you know that, and we've talked about that. It's, um, it's just been a very unique, remarkable experience, and I would not trade it for the world, quite honestly. It's been, uh, it's been amazing, you know. What can no, you say? And thank you for being such an amazing guest. You're the best. Ah, Big hugs. Thank you, sir. We're back to me. Godfather. Right, so Godfather. Listen, I don't have much to say, but I'm, I am going to say a few words. I don't have much to say because you know what I think. Even though I don't share it very often. Your brilliance, your kind, and your good. And those three things put together is what we call a mensch. You're extremely talented. I, it comes to no surprise that you're the one who's pulled this off. Yeah, because if there's anybody that could pull it off, it's Aaron Sigmund. And if there's anybody who could pull it off, 
at the level that it needed to be or that it is going to be, it's Aaron's segment. So I'm not going to bore you or everybody else, Aaron, but I am going to say, Mazal Tov, congratulations. Yet again, you've done something extraordinary and you've done it with style, with panache. You've done it with a smile. You've done it with class. And you've done right. it hiding behind those glasses in that suit, which everybody loves so much. No glasses. Well, that's very kind. Thank you so much. I, I, you know, what can I say? It's, um, it's truly a once in a lifetime experience. And, you know, I, having authored a lot of published books, authored books, um, co-authored books, um, and it really does take everybody, you know, uh, again, it all started with one phone call to Jose and then emails to Chiro and Carlito and uh, trips down to the DR. It's uh, it's been a tremendous ride. And as Carlito often says, uh, the story is not over and it will continue on. We'll do other things and the events uh, will bring everyone together. Uh, you know, like Carlito, I missed everybody when, during uh, the pandemic, as everyone did. And uh these events will be tremendous and it'll uh, it'll put a real heart and soul. I mean, a book is a tangible thing, but it's warm in one regard and, and not in the other. So it'll uh, it'll put it very much in context about the whole lifestyle aspect that we talk about over a glass of wine or a cocktail with a cigar. Looking at the book, it'll be a very different experience as opposed to kind of an abstract thing just talking about them. So. Yeah, we can't you wait to see. Can't wait to see everybody. Me too. Uh, I think I've only the 14th, seen 14th of December, if I'm not mistaken, in Dubai yeah. for the uh, the book signing and the launch of the Artur Fuente book. Super uh, exciting. Books rather going to be yeah. incredible. Where better in the world to be in in, in December? Uh, a, few <laughs> days, a few days, a few days before the final uh, of of the uh, FIFA World Cup in Dubai, uh, sign, signing off those books and, and hugging all of our friends. It's going to be wonderful. Aaron, thank you very much for being thank on the you, show Jeremiah. with us for the second time. And uh, we're looking for the third very soon. Anytime. You know where to find me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another spectacular and unique episode of the Fuente and Marifo Meet the Professor. Remember to take care of yourselves and of each other. And as once... A young man, very good looking with glasses and a hat, used to say, if you don't do it with fashion, don't do it at all. See you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. Bye, guys. Aaron, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. It was, it was wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Hi, Rich. Bye, Mel. Bye, Mel.